Okay, in this uh, video clip, we're going to take a look at integrating Salesforce with AWS Connect. So let me tell you what this video clip is not going to do. Uh, the assumption here is that you uh, have a Salesforce administrator. Uh, Salesforce is very customizable. There are many options for configuring Salesforce and many different modules that make up the Salesforce uh, uh, platform. What we're going to focus on here exclusively is how to set up the connector between Salesforce and AWS Connect. So what are the requirements? Um, first of all, we're going to walk through some PowerPoint slides, uh, static slides, and then we'll actually log in um, and configure this uh, like a real-time coding experience. But let me uh, show you the key pieces um, through PowerPoints first. When we go to log in and actually configure Salesforce, you're going to want to open both Salesforce and AWS Connect instance in uh, two different browsers uh, in Chrome or Firefox. So you want to get them set up because you're going to be moving back and forth between the two interfaces. You're going to cut and paste stuff in Salesforce and put it in Connect, and you're going to uh, copy stuff from Connect and put it in Salesforce. Uh, the requirements are pretty straightforward. You need uh, Salesforce Classic Console or Lightning. Uh, you need an AWS Connect instance, obviously, and the assumption here is that that's configured, debugged, and operational, and all we're doing here is adding in the Salesforce connector. You're going to have at least one user who has an agent privilege, and the AWS uh, documentation is a little confusing on this point. It sounds like this will only work with an agent uh, permission in Connect. That's not true. I, I have an administrator's uh, credential and it works. But at the end of the day, you're going to need at least one user who has an agent uh, privilege. You need to use Firefox or Chrome. Uh, my experience with WebRTC is such that uh, both those browsers have uh, WebRTC and uh, compatibility with the emerging standards. Obviously, Microsoft and Apple continue to go their own uh, competitive routes. If you want this to work, use Firefox or, or use Chrome. The integration process is pretty straightforward. We're going to install the uh, CTI adapter, and then we'll do some editing at Salesforce which is basically, I mean, there's only five to seven steps here, depending on how you break it up, but you're, you're gonna install the adapter, then you're gonna edit the Salesforce contact center configuration, adding in the, uh, you know, the adapter URL compatibility mode, um, add the uh, login for your CCP and, and connect, you'll format some numbers you'll set up the soft phone i should add here and you will add salesforce users so i mean you've got to define users in both aws connect and you have to define them in salesforce as well and then we'll go ahead and whitelist the salesforce url in aws connect So to install the um, CTI adapter, you're going to go to the App Exchange in Salesforce and search around for the there. Okay, so here we have logged into our management console. We probably should, uh, just in the interest of time, go down here and bring up Connect. And we have also logged in to Salesforce. So we have both tabs open here. And this will make it uh, easier to configure as you're going to be moving back and forth between the two interfaces. So step one, find your way to the app exchange.salesforce.com and do a search for AWS Connect. It's going to pop up um, this guy here, 
and you'll go ahead and click on him. And uh, it brings up a little video clip here to show you how Salesforce works after it's been installed. So interesting. Go ahead and watch that later. Right now, we're going to go ahead and do the install. So let's go ahead and get it now. At that point, it's going to, obviously, it has to install it. So it needs to uh, log in. Install in production or install in the sandbox. Now, if you have a, a production environment, you probably don't want to uh, do the initial uh, deployment in production. Let's put it in the sandbox and uh, test it and configure it. And as I pointed out earlier, there are so many uh, customization options in Salesforce that you're probably going to want to play with that. Uh, play with the uh, message exchange on the adapter uh, between your PBX platform, uh, in this case, AWS Connect, and the Salesforce platform. I'm going to go ahead and install it in production. It'll take uh, a few minutes to install. It'll confirm the installation uh, details. I'm going to go ahead uh, and install this. After the confirmation and clicking install, you'll get this screen that uh, indicates you want to install the connector for everybody or a select few, a profile, or maybe just for the administrator. The uh, installation process, just basically click and answer that question, and the next thing you should see is this indicating it was successfully installed. After you have successfully completed the installation of the adapter, which as you can see is pretty easy, just point and click, you're going to log into Connect and you're going to find uh, the instance that uh, you want to associate Salesforce with and you're going to copy this uh, URL login. So let's go ahead and copy that. And we're going to go back over to Salesforce. In the setup search window, type uh, call. Select call centers. You will see a summary of the steps needed to define a call center. Go ahead and hit uh, continue. And what you're going to want to do is click on the instance that we previously installed, right? Amazon Connect CCP adapter. And you're going to want to go down here, edit, and down here in the Connect URL. Go ahead and paste that URL in there with one change. Remove the word login from the link and replace it with CCP. So it should read your call center uh, instance uh, alias name dot aws apps dot com forward slash connect and then ccp at that point uh, you if you want to do it now you can go ahead and uh, save things and go ahead and add your users because this is the same page you use to configure users it's down here at the bottom of the page go ahead and match users Next, what we'll do is go to the visual, visual force in the search box, select visual pages. Now it's going to depend entirely on which type console you're using. I am to be using the AWS Lightning. Um, so let's select that. When you select this, you'll get this synopsis. You'll notice here a button that says preview. Go ahead and push the preview button. The preview button will open up a blank page with a URL at the top. You want to copy this URL, but before you copy it, you want to delete everything right up to the .com, salesforce.com, including uh, death by uh, back, backslash here. Get rid of that backslash. Okay, at this point, go ahead and copy that puppy. And then we'll go back to um, Amazon Connect. 
And here where it says application integration, we're going to go ahead and add an origin, drop it in here. It's critical that uh, you make sure that you, you see if it puts this um, slash back in, you're not gonna be able to add it. To add it, you need to delete that slash. Now I've already installed it, but you'll see the add button go live and then it will appear here. So at that point, um, we've got the basic configuration. We're gonna go back to uh, Salesforce, go back to the search box here. And this time we wanna to go to the app manager. In the app manager, we want to look for the console that we're using or that we want the soft phone installed on. Keep in mind, there's different consoles. So I want to go to the Lightning Sales console here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Edit. And at that point, we will select the um, utility bar over here on the left side. Hit the utility bar. And what we're going to want to do, I've already, I've already added it, but you're just going to hit the add button. That's going to bring up a search box. And down here, you'll find your CTI uh, soft phone. And uh, select it. And then go ahead and add it. Uh, I've already got it in here, so I'm not going to save this. But uh, you can change the label if you like. And you can change the uh, icon if you want a different kind of picture there. And there's some latitude with respect to the size of the box. But uh, Salesforce, uh, if you don't know it, actually rents that space uh, to the various PDX manufacturers and call center folks. And so the size is somewhat limited, but you can go ahead and do that. And at that point, the basic configuration is done. Now, it's, it's a good practice uh, to log out and of uh, both Salesforce and Connect uh, and then log back in. Um, give it some time to cook, if you will. But what we're looking to do here is to bring up our soft phone of our test agent. You've got to do this first before you bring up Salesforce. So that's an AWS requirement. So log into AWS um, as the test agent, or if you're the administrator testing this, go ahead and log in. And at that point, um, you can go ahead and log back into Salesforce. And once we log in, if we go over here to the sales console, yeah, you'll you should see the phone down here at the bottom of the screen, and if you click on it, you will see that you bring up uh, the soft phone. If you go to one account, you'll also notice an icon, a phone icon next to the numbers, which indicates that uh, you can actually click here, and at that point, it's placing an outbound call. So. That's uh, what it takes to install Salesforce. I hope that you have found this informative, and I thank you for viewing.